Hello everyone, this is your host TrevCL, and welcome to another Pokemon Challenge video. It's time we finish up this Emerald Kaizo Elite Four Challenge, this time only using Pokemon originating from the Hoenn region. Emerald Kaizo certainly treated the Hoenn region Pokemon well, buffing some Pokemon to insane levels of power. Add in the region naturally having two pseudo-legendaries and strong Pokemon already, and you've got a recipe for the strongest team so far in the miniseries. With so many powerful options, choosing only six was tough. Here's what I ended up going with. Starting off strong with possibly the most buffed Pokemon in the game, we have Moby Dick the Quiet Nature Wailord. Despite losing 10 base HP and having its speed stat literally cut to a base stat of 1, Wailord now has 110 in each of its attack, special attack, and special defense. Also having its defense boosted from 45 to 64, Wailord is almost like a water type Blissey with much more power. Holding the Mystic Water to further boost its Water Spout and Surf, Wailord will also be rocking Ice Beam for coverage against Drake and Self Destruct for general nuking. I mentioned previously how there were two pseudos in Hoenn, and here's the first of them, Jay the Salamence. I can't get enough of these mixed pseudos, as Mence has the lonely nature to boost attack at the cost of its physical defense. This shouldn't be a problem as Intimidate helps mitigate that, and the power boost is worth it. Speaking of power boost, Sharpbeak makes the already powerful Air Slash straight up deadly, followed by Dragon Claw, Rock Slide, and Fire Blast. Just as Salamence is a popular E4 team member in EK Nuzlocke's, so is Dusclops. Undertaker takes advantage of 50 more base HP and 30 more base attack to be a bulky physical attacker with an adamant nature. No leftovers in Kaizo, so I'll be instead utilizing Shell Bell as there's plenty of mons Dusclops does the massive damage to in the league. Using up my single use of the EQ TM, Dusclops will be going with Shadow Ball for big damage, Shadow Sneak for ensured destruction of Steven's Deoxys, and Nightshade for consistently high damage. Here's where the second pseudo is, Iron Giant the Metagross. Steel Psychic is just a necessary typing to add to the team in general, making an insane defensive core with its pseudo brethren. Add in a Brave Nature and Silk Scarf, making an explosion in Oko and anything not a ghost type, and you've got yourself quite the solid teammate. Oh yeah, by the way, yet another mixed attack in Pseudo Legendary. The aforementioned explosion is present, alongside Meteor Mash for Stab, Earth Power for the Steel and Fire types, and Ice Punch to help take on Drake's Dragons. Every Pokemon so far has either been a Pseudo Legendary or has had buff stats, so let's keep up that trend. Glalie adds many things to this team. A hasty nature allows for outspeeding much of the league at its newly minted base 100 speed, another intimidate user, never melt ice boosted ice beam and priority ice shard makes it the greatest straight killer in the series so far, and yeah, I guess boom is always a good thing to have. Three boomers on the same team means I should be able to always guarantee three kills in most games, and while I debated putting spikes in the last slot, I decided that winning a Glalie mirror match against Glacia might be fun, so weather ball rounds out the moveset. Lorelei the Milotic didn't gain any stat buffs, but it did gain Swift Swim, which could be useful against Glacia. Speaking of Glacia, this is the answer to most, if not all, of her mods. Another Shell Bell user, I'm looking to abuse that huge Spideff stat with a Calm Nature to knock out many a special attacker with Mirror Coat. Finishing up the set are the Water type standards of Surf and Ice Beam, with the ever useful Recover in the last slot. This is definitely the strongest team in the series so far, and should be able to easily beat the league. But can it achieve what the Johto team accomplished and earn the coveted clean sweep? Let's start with the battle against Sydney. As always, Sydney leads off with his Mega Mega Sableye, as I choose to lead off with Moby Dick. Shadow Ball does just under half while my returning Water Spout does about 75%. I am able to take another, but choose to save HP on Waylord and go into Salamence. Intimidate lowers Sableye's attack which allows Jay to take less than 100 HP of damage. Sharp Beak boosted Air Slash is definitely enough to finish off the Sableye, as well as the incoming Machamp in a single hit. Bizarre play by Sydney for sure. Now in is his Jolteon, and my play for this is to switch in my Dusclops into a T-Bolt. I easily take two hits, could have even taken a crit, and my return EQ is enough for another clean one-shot. Houndoom is always scary in Kaizo, but this time I have multiple checks. The first of which being my Lodic, which switches into a Spideff dropping Crunch. Now I do make a dumb, dumb play here. Forgetting Mirror Coat doesn't affect Dark types. Doesn't really matter anyways as I get crit by Hidden Power Grass though. Thankfully, as I mentioned, I have a second Doom check, and Waylord is just able to avoid a second straight crit and get yet another clean Oko. 
My water types have done their job, so I let Wailord go down to the incoming Alakazam Slender Punch. Undertaker has Priority Shadow Sneak, and in tandem with the Shell Bell, allows me to live the Psychic and finish off Zam with the second Sneak. Sydney's last Pokemon is his speedy Jolly Tauros, though I have plenty to deal with it. Either HP Ghost or Earthquake is coming my way, so Mince is obviously the play. With Intimidate once again lowering attack, I can live the incoming Double Edge, and with the Recoil and Boosted Air Slash, I can get off a lot of damage. This should be it for Mince, as any attack should end me, except that Sydney's AI sees a range where Quick Attack can kill, but he cannot. With 2 HP remaining, Taurus goes down securing the 4-0 victory. I actually planned my lead for Phoebe right this time, or so I thought. I either forgot her Gengar new Ice Punch, or didn't know about it in the first place. This leads to Salamence instantly dying. Never great to start down 6-5 turn 1. I can come in with Dusclops and 2-shot with Shadow Sneak, taking a pretty weak T-Bolt in between. The paralysis is definitely annoying, though hopefully it won't end up mattering. Gengar going down leads to a Dusclops mirror match. The odds are stacked against me as her Clop starts double teaming. I am able to hit through on the first try with a powerful Shadow Ball. Unfortunately, her falling Shadow Ball is much stronger thanks to a crit, and things aren't looking too good. Even worse, her Dusclops can rest up to full on my Waylord. I can bring her right back down to yellow HP with her Water Spout, but she predicts the second one and switches into her Ludicolo to sponge it. The next part of the battle goes terribly. No matter what I try to do, her Ludicolo starts putting everything on my team to sleep with Grass Whistle. First is Iron Giant, the Metagross. Next is Lorelei, the Milotic. I'm hoping to respond with a powerful Mirror Coat, but I never wake up. Luckily for me, Frostbite, the Glalie, can take out Ludi with three Ice Beams, as Phoebe chooses to go for two Surfs instead of for Grass Whistle again. However, my chances of winning are basically shot with a nearly fainted Pokemon, a sleeping Pokemon, and a slightly weakened slow Pokemon. I pivot on her incoming Crobat to get off an Intimidate, allowing my Waylord to take significantly less from Air Slash. I don't need to worry about Air Slash though, with her trying to again test my sleep luck. I can dodge the first, and nearly take out the bat in return, but I'm not so lucky the second time, though after a few turns I can wake up and finish it off with an Ice Beam. Normal Waylord would easily be in range of Gardevoir's Thunderbolt, but this isn't your average Waylord, this is EK Waylord. I live on 12 and respond with the self-destruct, and down goes Gardevoir. I only have the sleeping Metagross left against her weakened Clops and full health Sableye. However, here's where Metagross proves just how much of an Iron Giant it is. Despite Sableye starting its double team shenanigans, Metagross is able to wake up, hit every single one of its Meteor Mashes with one even getting a pivotal attack boost, and after taking out Sableye, the weakened Clops easily falls to a plus one mash leaving me with the very narrow 1-0 victory over Phoebe. Now I wish I could say that after that improbable comeback, that the rest of the league went smoothly as I cruised to another zero reset E4 run, just like I did in the Johto video. But I did not. A combination of questionable plays at best, and unfortunately timed hacks, leads to Glacia absolutely stopping me. While it was only a 2-0 loss, the score does not reflect the domination I endured. The second attempt goes much more smoothly, as I lead with Metagross instead of Glalie this time. This leads to me easily taking a Weather Ball, allowing me to Oko back with a Mash. This also means no spikes, which was a big problem in the first attempt. I need to keep Iron Giant for later, and Waylord can easily sponge hits from her Dugon all day. I had hoped Water Spout plus Surf would be enough in the rain, but that combo came up just the tiniest bit short, with Dugon living with a sliver of HP. This does open up a big opportunity for me though. I know another HP Grass is coming, so I can switch into Glalie and take negligible damage. Even 4 times resisted, Priority Ice Shard can pick off the heavily weakened Dugon. In next is her Swampert, and I make what looks to be a highly questionable play. I know the incoming attack is Ancient Power, but despite that, I switch into Mence. I'm trying to intimidate Pivot to allow Glalie to live a hit from Swampert and go boom. This almost doesn't end up working out, as on the predicted Ice Beam into Mence, she actually went for Yawn. I thankfully dodged and even with an accuracy drop from Muddy Water, Explosion is obviously enough to trade Glalie for Swampert. I make another risky play, switching Metagross into Regice's Ice Beam, but once again it works out, allowing Metagross to mash Regice to death. This turns into a 2 for 1, as I can then boom on her Waylord, leaving me with 4 Pokemon to Glacia's last Lapras. 
I get a little retribution for the hacks I've gotten in my favor so far in this battle, and after some paralysis shenanigans, Lorelai faints. It was able to get off massive damage with Miracoat first, which allows Mints to come in, and... Whoops, forgot about Ice Shard. As I was saying, this allows Dusclops to come in, take the rain boosted Hydro Pump not too well from Lapras, and respond back with Shadow Ball for the second attempt victory. Drake leads off with his ever dangerous Soul Dew Latios. My best play is to hope for no crit on my Lodic, which is thankfully the case. One Miracoat later, and I'm now facing down Tyranitar. I know Drake will either choose to go for Ancient Power, which Metacross will take easily, or Dragon Dance, like he ends up going for. Iron Giant is no slouch, however, and EQ doesn't even bring me down to red while my Meteor Mash brings it down to no color at all. I have no good switch in Cements, so I need to sack Gross. But now, Drake's about to get Frostbitten. Down goes Salamence to a single Ice Beam with Dragonite coming in to follow. Thanks to Thick Fat, it can live one Ice Beam in red HP. Here's where Ice Shark comes through though, outspeeding plus one Dragonite and finishing it off. And while I can't take down his Latios due to sheer natural bulk and soul dew, I can bring it into red before Glalie's run is finally over. Easy pickings for a Dusclop Shadow Sneak, and after taking a few Dracos from Kingdra, Undertaker pins Drake for the rather simple 4-0 victory. The opening to Steven's champion battle needs no introduction. Fire move from Mence to bring down Metagross to low HP, prompting it to go for Explosion. Switch into Dusclops for the free KO. What was not part of the plan was being crit by Steven's Mewtwo on the second attack, after leaving it with the tiniest sliver of health. My best play at this point was obviously to finish it off with priority Ice Shard, but the sequencing was all messed up. Aerodactyl is here, and I subject it to the same treatment that I did for Drake's T-Tar. Even with the Ancient Power boost, I can limp the following EQ and Mash cuts right through the defense boost. Deoxys can come in and easily take down Iron Giant, so my play is to hope somehow that Ice Shard can kill. Deoxys is frail, but an Ice Shard from a Glalie is not exactly an overpowering move. Luck is in my favor though, as I get the revenge crit, and now all Steven has is Starmie and Jirachi, which is now in. Explosion does about 50% to said Jirachi, allowing Salamence to come in and melt it with a fire blast. After Sack and Mence to the Starmie's Ice Beam, Lorelai can come in, tank two Thunderbolts, and finish the Regional Emerald Kaizo Elite Four Challenge with a combination of Miracoat and Ice Beam. I wanted to start off this ending by thanking you all once again for watching. While my motivation for uploading can waver, all the support I've gotten during my many hiatuses definitely makes me want to do better. The good news is I have a ton of footage from big projects I've already recorded, so now it's all about how many of them I can get out in the last two months of 2021. The EV sequel video is planned for right at the end of December, but the plan is to get another three to four uploads between now and then. While this is the end of the regional EK Elite Four challenge, we will be revisiting Emerald Kaizo again this year. Spoiler alert, it's one of those said big projects, having even more raw footage than the original Eevee Gale of Darkness video. With all that being said, if you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more, hitting that like and or subscribe button goes a long way. I want to see if I can get to 300 subscribers by the end of the year. A bit of a lofty goal for sure, but one that's doable with enough hard work on my end. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.